Okay, so welcome to this next video in which we are discussing uh, type 1 activation of endothelial cells. Okay, so, so far uh, we have seen that uh, histamine binding to the H1 receptor has led to the activation of the GQ pathway, uh, which leads to release of calcium from the intracellular stores, and this calcium has so far activated cellular phospholipase A2, which has broken down phosphatidylcholine into lysophosphatidylcholine and also a free fatty acid, and we now need to see what this free fatty acid is. So here is this free fatty acid. Okay, now this free fatty acid temporarily remains within the cell membrane, so both of the byproducts now are still within the cell membrane. Now, what is this free fatty acid? What fatty acid do you generally have bound in the second position of phosphatidylcholine? Well, it's usually a fatty acid known as arachidonic acid, and this is a famous molecule. Arachidonic acid. This is the starting molecule for uh, a prostanoid synthesis. Okay, so we will come back to lysophosphatidylcholine. It's another star of this show, uh, but for the time being, we're going to look at arachidonic acid, which is slightly more famous, it's fair to say, than lysophosphatidylcholine. Okay, so let's have a look what arachidonic acid is going to do. So, arachidonic acid is not going to survive long. It's going to be converted into something better, a bigger and better star. Okay, so, here is the phospholipid bilayer here. Okay, and we have now got some of this arachidonic acid within our phospholipid bilayer, thanks to the phospholipase A2. Okay, and this is now going to be acted upon by an enzyme known as COX-1. So endothelial cells constitutively express a molecule known as, well, an enzyme known as COX-1. So let me show you this enzyme. Now, we're going to see that in later videos, when we discuss type 2 activation of endothelial cells, which we're not going to get onto in this video, we're on type 1 activation, we will see that there are changes in the expression of... Um, well, changes in the expression of certain of the um, COX enzymes. Well, there's loads of changes in expression of genes, okay? And in specifically, one of the, uh, the other form of cyclooxygenase, COX-2, will be turned on. But at the moment, we are discussing type 1 activation of endothelial cells. And this is really short term. And the mast cells have just detected this danger signal, and they are now releasing histamine, and the endothelial cells are responding. They haven't got time to change their gene expression yet. They haven't had time. Okay, that, That's all part of type 2 activation. We're discussing the short-term acute inflammatory response, which is type 1 uh, end activation of endothelial cells. So they constitutively express this enzyme known as COX-1, which is within the cell membrane. Okay, so now what does COX-1 stand for? Well, it stands for cyclooxygenase 1. Okay, and this also has another old name. This is the more modern name that any reasonable person will use. However, it has an old name that is still occasionally used. And this is prostaglandin H2 synthase. And then this is type 1. Okay, and for this reason, you will sometimes hear COX-1 referred to as PG for prostaglandin, H for H2, synthase 1. So PGHS1 is the same thing as COX-1, so don't let that confuse you. Okay, so what is COX-1 going to do to our star here, which is arachidonic acid? Well, basically, it's going to do two things to it. It's going to catalyze one reaction, and then just because it can't resist, it's going to catalyze another reaction. So it's firstly going to catalyze the reaction where you convert arachidonic acid into prostaglandin G2. Okay, so PGG2. So this stands for prostaglandin G2. And then it's going to catalyze a further reaction where you convert prostaglandin G2 into prostaglandin H2. 
So prostaglandin G2 isn't going to survive very long, it's going to go straight on to prostaglandin H2. Okay, so this is prostaglandin H2, or PGH2 for short. So, both of these reactions are catalyzed by cyclooxygenase, and specifically here it's cyclooxygenase 1. Now, cyclooxygenase 2 catalyzes the exact same reaction, but as I say, the, we're talking about the constitutive expression, and the main one which endothelial cells constitutively express is COX-1. So it's going to catalyze both of these reactions here. Okay, now these reactions are so important that they actually have names. This first reaction here is known as the cyclooxygenase reaction, and is clearly the reaction after which the whole enzyme has been named. Okay, and the second reaction where you convert prostaglandin G2 into prostaglandin H2, that is named the peroxidase reaction. So this is the peroxidase reaction. Okay, right. So, um, what now happens to prostaglandin H2? So, we've started with um, cellular phospholipase A2 becoming active. It um, releases this arachidonic acid from the claws of the phosphatidylcholine molecules, which are within the phospholipid bilayer of the cell. Okay, and these are now be, have now been converted firstly into prostaglandin G2 and then into prostaglandin H2 by the cyclooxygenase 1 enzyme. Okay, now prostaglandin H2 is going to be converted into prostaglandin I2. Okay, so it's going to be converted further into prostaglandin I2. And prostaglandin I2 is so important that it's also been given another name. Whoops. It's uh, also been called prostacyclin. Okay, and it's fair to say that you'll hear prostacyclin more than you will hear prostaglandin I2. Okay, now what, which enzyme catalyzes the conversion of prostaglandin H2 into prostaglandin I2? Well, it is the enzyme prostaglandin I2 synthase, or PGI2 synthase. Now, PGI2 is within the membrane of uh, the ER. Okay, so this is a great big enzyme that's within the membrane of the ER, so it's not within the cell membrane. So basically, the arachidonic acid was bound to the membrane, but as cyclooxygenase 1 works on it, the final product, the prostaglandin H2, then goes into the cytoplasm, and it goes to the membrane of the endoplasmic reticulum down here, where this enzyme prostaglandin I2 synthase, or prostacyclin synthase, which, by the way, just for a little bit of added inf uh, interest, is a cytochrome P450 enzyme. So this is within the family of cytochrome P450 enzymes. Okay, uh, And this enzyme converts prostaglandin H2 into prostaglandin I2, and then what will happen is the prostaglandin I2 will be released from the cell. Okay, so this will be secreted. Now, what does prostaglandin I2 do? Well, it's a very powerful vasodilator. So where is this going to be extremely important? Well, is it going to be extremely important that the capillaries are releasing prostaglandin I2? Well, no, because they've got no smooth muscle surrounding them. Is it going to be extremely important that the uh, endothelial cells of the venules are releasing prostaglandin I2. Again, not that important because they've got no smooth muscle cells around them. However, it's going to be extremely important for the arterial cell endothelial cells to release prostaglandin I2 because that is then going to find these smooth muscle cells, cause relaxation of those smooth muscle cells, and then uh, that will lead to vasorelaxation. So it will widen these rings of smooth muscle cells and the um, vessel will dilatate, basically, and allow more blood to flow through it. Okay, uh, now, you can imagine that if the um, endothelial cells of the capillaries and the venules are producing, chucking out prostaglandin I2, then maybe a little bit will just go into the interstitial fluid and make it happen to find an arteriole and act on the smooth muscle of that arteriole. So maybe the production of prostaglandin I2 uh, by these two will 
lead to the dilatation of smooth muscle cells of the arterioles, but these two aren't going to vasodilate in themselves because they have no smooth muscle cell constricting them in the first place. However, the arterioles, which do have vascular smooth muscle cell, will vasodilate, and this will mean that the amount of blood that can flow through the arterioles, which are supplying this portion of tissue, is going to get greater, so you're going to have an increased blood supply to this affected area. And we'll continue this discussion in the next video.